A job candidate who has their GED has a lot of potential and you have to decide, well, where do I want to go with this? First of all, that's where somebody may be able to help you, but you have to start somewhere. And the first place I think that you need to start is with your own head. Because I think a lot of people, whether they have a GED or a master's degree, are always worried about what they don't have. And they don't think about what they do have. You have attained the equivalency of a high school diploma. What did that take to get that? That took a lot of persistence. It took planning. You had to plan your life to go study for it and actually take the test. You had to organize your life. You had to study, probably do research and plan and practice and get ready to take that test and then be your best when you took the test. And you had to be committed to it. You had to say, I am going to make this goal happen. So you were goal oriented, okay? So those were all the things that you had going for you and you still have going for you. Employers do hire for skills, but they also hire for per the person, characteristics, traits, and qualities. So make sure you talk about those and how important those are. Do not minimize those. Employers are looking for that. People that come and show up on time are committed and dedicated and have the right attitude to get along with other people. You need to do your homework. This is the biggest issue that employers bring up and tell me that people come into the interview clueless about their company, clueless about who they are, and clueless about the job they want. So doing your homework means that you discover who is this company that I'm going to ask for a job? What do they do? What do they manufacture? What services are they in? Who is their audience or who is their customer or client? Minimally know that. Spend a half an hour on the internet. The information is right there. It's so easy for you to discover that. So know who the company is, know who this person is you're interviewing, their name, their title, and know what the job is. You may not know what the exact duties of that job are, but if you know the title, then you can do some digging around on the internet for that position and what it entails. And then also know about you. Sit down and figure out what are my top greatest strengths? Are they the ability to write, communicate, solve problems, do math, research, plan, organize, computer skills, know what those are. Then know what you know about. Everybody has a body of knowledge. So the homework entails three areas, knowing the job, knowing the company, and knowing yourself. When it comes to presenting yourself, everything matters. So keep this in mind. You are always auditioning when you are in an interview. From the moment you walk in the door and you greet the receptionist until you meet the person you're interviewing, when you sit down up until the point you walk out and you leave. So every little thing is important. Look like a professional. Minimally for a man, you would wear a sport coat, a long sleeve shirt, um, a dark slack of some sort, socks that do not show your ankles, and shoes, tie shoes, uh, some kind of dress shoe. Don't wear plaids, don't wear Hawaiian prints, don't wear shirts with words on them, things like that. So look like you got cleaned up to go to an interview. And if it's for a more professional position, depending on the industry, you would wear a tie. Women don't wear short, short skirts, don't wear low cut tops, don't wear um, things with a lot of busy uh, plaids and prints and things like that. Keep it very simple. All of those things reflect your judgment, your maturity, and your ability to be a professional and to know that you're going to be in a work environment. So you're going to dress like that. Greet the receptionist with a smile. 
you tell them I am here, you tell them your name, I am here for the interview with Susan Smith, and they tell you please have a seat, and you do that. So you follow directions, that's, the, that's really important. Sounds like a small thing, but it's an important thing. Because sometimes the employer even asks that receptionist, what did you think of John Jones when he came to our office today? So the receptionist will say he was very pleasant or he was very rude. So then when you are asked to come into the interview, shake hands, look the person in the eyes and shake hands firmly. Don't give a limp fish kind of handshake. A very firm handshake would be important. Wait to be told to be seated. And then if you're offered water or coffee and you decide to take it, always say thank you. I've had employers tell me, this is all part of what they look at to see how you react. And if you don't say thank you, and if you're not pleasant and you're not polite, they say you're out because we want people who are pleasant and polite at our company. So those are all things that you wanna be very cognizant of and be aware of how you um, interact and what you do. Let the interviewer take the lead. And at all times, try to maintain eye contact. Of course, it's natural. Sometimes when we talk, we look up, we look down, we look around and try to be animated, but don't be false. You know, you gotta be who you are. Just relax and see the interview. This will help you so much if you can see the interview as a conversation. It's not a sell job where you're sitting there trying to make them want you. It's a conversation where they're asking you questions, you're asking them questions, and you're going back and forth. The questions that are appropriate for you to ask in an interview are questions related to the job, the responsibilities of the position, the company, and why the position might be open, those kinds of things. Things you never wanna talk about are how much does the job pay, what are the benefits? When do I get to take smoke breaks? Um, those kinds of things. Those are what I call the what can you do for me things. And you will get to those issues when the time is right. And the time is right when they've offered you the position. You do not want to provide personal information in an interview unless it is relevant to the job. It's one of the biggest mistakes people make in interviews. They say things like, well, I really need this job because my husband, my wife just lost her job or we're paying the bills for my mother-in-law to be in a nursing home or my dog is sick and needs an operation. All of those things are irrelevant and have nothing to do with the job, why you're qualified, or why they would hire you. It shows that when you bring up that kind of information that you just don't get it. You do not have good judgment if you bring up those kinds of, that kind of information. It detracts from your professionalism. So stick to information that's relevant, that's uh, about your qualifications, your skills, your education, what kind of person you are. How do you overcome a background that you're not so proud of? I think it's really important for you to say what you learned from it and how it's a thing of the past and how you have turned your life around, what you're now doing, what you have done, attitude shift, and, and also what you're doing with your life. What are the kinds of uh, activities that you're involved in? And really what's changed for you. So you have to make a case for how you're a different person. We all have things that we've done that we're not proud of. And some things you are gonna to have to admit to. Other times you don't need to necessarily talk about them, but focus on the present. Um, if you've had a lot of jobs that really were dead end jobs, that didn't go anywhere, that you're not feeling very proud of, it's fine to also say, you know, before 
1990, I had some jobs that um, really were just to pay the bills. I was going through a difficult time in my life. I had to support my family. Um, whatever the circumstances, don't go into a lot of detail. But that, again, that I am at a different place in life now. And here's what's happened since then. I've gotten my GED. I am presently um, on the committee of something at my church. I'm the captain of the soccer team for my kids, whatever it might be. So it's really a matter of not dwelling, admitting, saying, I've learned, I'm ready to move on, and I have moved on. And when it's over, make sure you ask, what are the next steps? And always, always, always write a thank you note, a customized thank you note for that employer. Not just, dear Susan Jones or Susan Smith, thank you very much for the interview. I look forward to hearing back from you. But take some of the conversation that you had and put that into your thank you note and show them you are really listening. This is an opportunity to influence them and inspire them about you even more. A lot of people don't do that and that will make you stand out. Don't feel like you are alone in this process. I know that it feels like you are because you're sitting there at home with your resume and this job that you're getting ready to go interview for and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know how I'm coming across. I don't know what to even ask get help. There are people who have advice and have information, who have been through it, who are willing to help you. So seek it. And another source of information and help for you are other professionals. Don't be afraid to go talk to people who are in an industry you want to get in or professionals that you know through family or who might be family or neighbors. Just to say, could you sit down and talk to me about how I'm coming across, uh, what I might do differently. Tell me a little bit about your industry, what I should know, what questions I should think about. Um, people are willing to help you. People love to help people, so don't be afraid to ask for help.